Brainstorming and sharing ideas is the funnest part of the creative process. We decided to skip the boring part of actually making stuff and just do the fun part. I'm your host, Tom Walma. I'm Michael Cesaro. Jason Fallon Myers. Hello, gentlemen. My name is Jared Jaden, by the way. Activity wasted. One of the things that I always have an issue remember people, like their name or how I know them. So some sort of glasses or something like that. Like, like I don't know, maybe hit a button in your glasses. Maybe some That's information. Cool. Talk to you know, like this person's fo- Facebook profile. Because I like, especially like with with having students, like they come back and go, "Hey, what's going on, Mr. Cesaro?" I'm like, "Okay, well, I know I taught you. How, how do I do it? Figure out who this person is." So usually, what I do yeah. is, I'm, if I'm with my wife, I'll I'll introduce her. Good to see you. Here's my wife, Julie, and then or I say, "Here's my wife," and she and I. Hey, oh, I'm Julie, and then then they'll say, "Oh, I'm this person." Right. So, Oldest so, trick in the book: men introduce each other if you can't remember. Right. So you're talking about students from previous years, right? Or like, because there's just so many of them. Or just sometimes like adult, I guess, people I, I that know me that I'm like, who the hell is this person? <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I bet that'll happen for <laughs> sure with uh, the Facebook and the augmented reality classes. And it, I don't know how they would, uh, like, would you want to know, like, how you know them too? Like, were they a student? Something like exactly who that person is or how I know them or way in which I knew them or like, uh, at least like a, their latest fake message or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. So maybe like when you met them. Maybe the glasses are like just recording things and like when you shake the hand or whatever or take a snapshot and you'd have to go in like later that night and say, okay, this person, um, give like a little profile, uh, my cousin's wife or my student year 2022. So you might have to tell it like a little a little and, bit of context of who they are. Um, and then, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Can I j- jump in real quick? Uh, Michael, when I was teaching, and maybe you can really, I think maybe <coughs> you're saying this a little bit too, like um, I'd have probably 100 students at any one time. And within a four-month semester, it was very rare to really be able to nail down the names like I would run into them on the street. But right now, if you shoved a notebook in front of me and said, name 100 comics, including the three sitting here, I could tell you who they are, where they run shows, probably one or two of their jokes, maybe a little bit about their life or their story. I think that's probably with teaching, I was doing it and it was cool, but I didn't love it. Where like with comedy, I love it. And knowing all these people, and you guys know this, it's your business, you kind of have to know them. You're either putting them on shows, you're on their shows. So it's like, yeah, I mean, comics, yes, students, no. So I think there's something there about internally, if I'm being honest, the level of how much I actually care to know these people. Plus, you know, uh, with the student, you're going to have them temporarily. Whereas with comedy, yeah. you know, we keep doing this for a very, very long time. And these are going to be people you need to know. There's only so much space up there you now. So maybe that could be something with your premise yeah. too about like, well, I can keep one or the other. Here's the important people. Let's get rid of the less important people. <laughs> it's important, but less important to what you need at the time. Yeah. yeah. That gave me an idea. I wonder if the reason you remember comics better is you see them talk for like seven minutes at a time. And so you, you, but if, if you're, if you see like 30 kids in a classroom, it could be weeks before a particular student like talks for a long duration other than like answering a a question. Like there's no personality there. They're answering a math question or something. That's a good point. Like even when I, if I'm at like an open mic or something, I want to hear everybody. And I try to stay, I, I'm excited to hear what they have to say. I'm interested. Um, and we all know like an open mic can kind of go south at some point, but I still I still want to hear it. Whereas with that, you're absolutely right. It's like I kind of have to hear it. And then may, you're right. Maybe I don't hear anything from them for a long time. And uh, yeah, and we see when people do their jokes, like the character they infuse into that. So that becomes memorable. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> it's, a, it's a different approach for um, different uses that you have for, for people, for lack of a 
it's it's kind of weird. Like I don't know if you guys uh, have ever encountered this situation where you know you went to school with somebody, you went to school with them for like four or five years, and then you're like, hey man, and then they like don't even know who the fuck you are. It's like cool. <laughs> I remember you, but you don't remember me. <laughs> like we spent fucking five years together yeah. in school. What's wrong with you, dude? You don't remember? Yeah, me? like you need an impact. Yeah, dude, we sat weird. in the same class for six hours a fucking day for five fucking years. <laughs> yep. I don't know. That's, that that's weird hurts. and awkward. It happens. Like, okay, I guess it's I'm a weirdo for remembering you. We were in detention <laughs> every day. And you don't remember me? <laughs> we did time together, man. We did time. <laughs> but it was. School is like prison, man. If I fucking tell you. you know, nobody really wants to be to... there, especially learning the same shit over and over again. They try to feed you the same shit over and over again. Year after year after year, I'm like, I've had enough. And you, and you think in high school they start teaching some shit you might lose, you know, use in your life, like uh, how to do an oil change, or you know, how to do your taxes, or how to file for a mortgage, or how to buy a car, or how to raise your damn kids properly. <laughs> That's true. I've had this discussion many times at my house that you learn stuff, and it's you know, math and algebra and all that. It's fine, you know, fine in it, but. You're right. Where's the actual like value? Value school could be so much more than it is. It's true. So for one, you got you got the state that's kind of guiding what, and uh, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with you. Um, and I think I've talked to Jaden about about to Grand Rapids, but you know, and forcing every kid to take algebra two. I mean, so some of the stuff in there that they're absolutely never going to use. And the, and the kids that sure. aren't aren't good with math, they struggle. They, they feel yeah. like they're a failure. So like there's a real issue there, and I think hopefully they they end up looking at that. I don't know if they will. Try to you know fit a round peg into a square hole, you know, and just yeah it doesn't work for everybody. But uh, and I, I think like if you talk to most of the teachers, like to add value to the the curriculum, I think it's maybe maybe we were we were the same way when we were younger. But I teach kids how to do the taxes. I see posts with by them later. It's like oh, I wish I would have learned how to do taxes in school. I taught you how right. to do it. Like we did that. I showed you how to <laughs> buy a house. We we did this whole like like how to get, you know look for a job and like break down your, your monthly and buy a house with that and all the the costs that go with that. Like it's either don't remember or they just don't care enough at the time. And it's because you know they're young. They don't, right. they don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, but you know, and I, I was probably, right. probably the same way. You you know. Well, even if they don't remember that, learn it easier the second time. What were you saying? Sorry, I thought it was good you're trying to make that attempt that uh, you know, teaching them how to do taxes and the mortgage and stuff like that. Like, I don't remember any teacher ever trying to teach me that, and especially in like high school. That should be the time to like try to put that into your head a little bit. But instead, they're trying to teach me about Shakespeare, which I could give a shit less about. I thought his writing was terrible. It was hard to follow. It was written worse than the Bible is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Anything yeah. else with the uh, glasses or the, the the tool to help remember people's names? Uh, I don't know. Anybody else? How much would you pay for glasses like that? A hundred bucks or so, <laughs> right? I mean, I never thought I'd I'd, I'd pay three hundred and fifty bucks for a, an Apple Watch, but I have, <laughs> eventually I would feel like I need it, you know. Do you think that would yeah. make you lazy? Like you'd never learn another kid's name again because, because they'd all be on your glasses? Well, maybe. <laughs> it's it's a, very possible. I think, you know, there's an element too to this of the teacher them's feeling obsolete. Because for the longest time, I would try to teach my students how to cite sources. And then I realized there was apps and yeah. things that could do that for them. And then I was myself like, really, why... Why not just use the app? This isn't something you should be spending hours on. And yet I here I was like, oh, you have to do it yourself. Then I realized like, I don't know the difference whether they did it themselves or who cares, you know? So there's a certain yeah. point where it becomes a matter of, am I just teaching because that's the position they gave me and I'm not really adding value? By the way, Michael, your glasses remind me, you guys have seen They Live, right? With Roddy yes, Roddy. Yes, those are, that, that's the glasses I want. I don't remember it to yes. that level of detail of what the glasses look like. Consume, well, they, obey, reproduce. Yeah, they, re they reveal what's actually there. So I, if I remember correctly, you can correct me if this is wrong. It's like an alien invasion, but they've kind of immersed themselves into life. And then you put on these glasses and you can kind of see them really are. And there's all these 
messages. It's a pretty cool movie. I think it was a John Carpenter. Play. Yep. It's good. Classic. <laughs> Maybe if you give everyone not just a name on the glasses, but like a monster avatar. <laughs> so they're all like a different, weird monster, and that'll help you remember. Or like if you could see like what that what that person's really like, right? Is it a backstabber? Are they you know a liar? Like you know cheater? Right? About that if you had that you know with all those uh, dating apps out there, right? Like you're going on all these dates, and you're like, oh, all right. I person's no good you know you, you might have something there i want it i want it ready by thursday night i want to see it all right 100 bucks get on it well uh we can wrap up the podcast uh unfortunately we have a lot of technical difficulties but uh thanks for hanging in there to well, the end for having me any shows or podcasts or anything that you guys want to plug featuring at uh, Traverse City Comedy Club for Mike Jeter in a couple weeks. Uh, that's that's the next one. My lovely wife, Amanda, will be the host. Yeah, I got uh, the Comedy, yeah. Comedy Castle round two of uh, Detroit to LA 22nd. So. I'm doing a contest in Portage in December, Presidential Brewing Company. So, Jason, you run a lot, a lot of Doomsday shows. Are those like the second Saturday of the month or are they like a regular time? It, not really. Uh, we do them once a month. We try to separate them by four to six weeks, and always either a Friday or a Sunday. Okay, I'll find a flyer for GravCap and for uh, your other Doomsday shows. This has been a production of Planet Amp Podcast, powered by Pinecast.